The GTA Definitive Editions are garbage and everybody knows it, right? Well, almost everybody judging by this poll I made, let me open your eyes, non-believers. In this video, I'll showcase 101 things which I hate about these garbage editions. If some of you love them, that's great, more power to you, however, it took me just over 3 hours to find 101 things wrong with GTA 3, Vice City and San Andreas. The research stream is in the description. If I spend a week of research, I bet I could find a thousand even, but let's just showcase 101 for now. Also, if this seems too nitpicky, yeah. It definitely is, because I expect the definitive editions, which came out 20 years after the originals, to be an improvement, not a downgrade. I'll hold nothing back. Oh, let's go. Ok, let's start with the main menu. In the originals, when saving a game, you can see the exact date and time it happened. In the definitives, it's all blank. This makes it very difficult to remember which your last save is, especially if you have multiple saves with the same name. It's especially hard for me as a content creator since I shuffle between hundreds of saves for a single video, making it a nightmare to find what I want. A very fun glitch I used back in the day was the hobo duplication. In this tunnel in Portland, if you get a bobcat and do this in the middle of the hobo circle, you can spawn hundreds of these guys giving yourself infinite molotovs. In the definitives you can no longer do it. It's something fun which hurt nobody, but you cannot do it anymore. Shame. To me the biggest problem the definitive editions have is the camera movement while in a vehicle. It constantly fights with you and you cannot move it freely. You cannot look back for more than a second unless you lock it. Sure, the free cam edition in GTA 3 and Vice City is nice, but they suffer from the same problem. The PC version used to have a replay system. It was super useful when speedrunning, when making stunting videos, glitching yourself, teleporting yourself, or even just looking at what you just did. This was completely removed from the definitives. Probably the most useful feature and now it's gone. The bad character models are an obvious one. NPCs look like Sims characters, like dolls. I can't believe they look worse than the greasy characters from the previous remasters. Sure, not every single character is worse, but most are and they look ridiculous. Listen to the garage sounds in the original. Now listen to them in the divinity. Yep, broken garage sounds where it repeats itself constantly until it fully opens or closes. In Vice City, the flying dodo you see in the sky has a banner advertising something. The one in the definitive just flies around with no purpose whatsoever. It used to be a nice background item which makes the city more believable, but not anymore. You know the big ass chicken in San Andreas, right? It looks like a chicken. Chickens move their heads in a similar fashion. Well, it does absolutely nothing in the definitive. A static chicken with no purpose. Great. Fences are broken. Sometimes when you bump into one, it flies away. Sometimes it just sinks in the ground. Sometimes it breaks, but a second fence takes its place, making you break it again. The fence physics are completely busted in the definitive. Did you enjoy flying the Doro in the original GTA 3 on your PC? You did? <gasps> well, screw you! You can't fly it anymore on PC unless you buy a controller. Yeah, keyboard controls are non-existent and you gotta spend more money on extra hardware just to enjoy the look of Liberty City from the sky. The definitive editions are censored. So censored in fact that Vice City's story makes absolutely no sense anymore because one of the gangs is unnamed. You don't know who you are going after. The word Haitian is removed and in some cutscenes characters make hand motions, but no words come out since they're talking about the Haitians, making many cutscenes awkward. Also in San Andreas, for instance, the Confederate flag was removed as well and replaced with a different one. Massive censorship all around. Try drinking from a vending machine in San Andreas. What do you see? I see Trump. CJ drinks with his nose or eyes or I have no idea what he's doing. This is how you properly drink CJ. You dummy. The mission name text in the definitive editions was moved. Now sometimes it blocks off important characters which were in plain view in the originals. 
the M16 model in GTA 3 is now replaced with the San Andreas one. I have no idea why this is the case, it had proper HUD model before, even if it looks better now, it does not belong here since first of all, what is shown is an M4, not an M16, and secondly this is a San Andreas item, it shouldn't be in GTA 3. In the originals we had a player skin option, at any time you can just change your skin to whatever you like, download one or make one yourself and change it with a few clicks. As you guessed it, this is not possible in the definitive. Another good function was removed. The definitive editions have a baby difficulty, most missions in all three games are a cakewalk now. Less enemies, they have checkpoints, extra spawns for health and armor, the games are made for babies now and it pisses me off. And it pisses me off because the games were never difficult to begin with. Reducing the difficulty even more shows what Rockstar thinks of its players, a bunch of toddlers who need a lot of hand holding or else they will be lost and would never play their garbage ever again. Cars catching fire is much less visible now. Unless you actively try to listen for fire, then you may not hear it ever from the sirens, the honking and whatnot. You may miss it and end up dying as a result. In the originals it was very visible and you never missed it. The entire atmosphere is lost now. GT3 is supposed to be dark and gloomy. Each part of San Andreas has a different color palette. Just looking at the sky you know which part of the map you are in. I guess only Vice City's aesthetics feel right, but all three games look the same, bright, colorful and cheerful, something which GTA 3 for instance definitely is not. Sometimes when starting up GTA Vice City your movement inputs will not register, no matter how many times you mash WASD, Tommy will not move, only restarting the game fixes this issue. Windows have reflections now. This could have been a nice addition if only it was removed during certain cutscenes. Now if somebody is behind glass you can barely see what they are doing. The reflections block key moments and once memorable facial expressions. Some outfits change their look depending on which shoes you wear. Here we have the beige pants for instance which look, you know, beige. Well, let's use cowboy boots with them. Uh oh, the pants have a completely different color now, it's no longer beige. Needless to say this did not exist in the originals and the color remains no matter which shoes CJ wears. When loading a save game in the original you get a progress bar and some music accompanying it. The defectives are devoid of music and there's no bar. Sure, it loads much faster nowadays since we use SSD so we don't need a progress bar, but some signature GTA music at least would not hurt. Pedestrians and even protagonists will sometimes sink in the ground at random locations of the game. A good example is Claude's hideout in GTA 3, which is a main area many new players would visit very often. Swimming in the originals is messed up with high frame rate. An easy fix is to lock it to 30 or to 25 and you're good. The Definitive's mechanics are always tied to 60 FPS no matter where you set it at, meaning that you're always swimming at 60 FPS mechanics no matter how much you try to change it. This makes beating your cock much more difficult and even close to impossible. The custom music tracks are gone, you can no longer include music you want in your game. You gotta use different software or even your phone or different devices if you wanna listen to your tunes. The music volume slider is now tied to ambient noises. Sounds like water at the beaches, the riot sounds in the GTA Vice City mission and much more. As a YouTuber who always has to have his music at zero at all times since I don't wanna get a copyright claim, I'll never hear ambient noises ever again. San Andreas now has smaller map boundaries. Previously you could go on forever. In the definitives you can clearly see the border and the map feels much smaller as a result. Certain markers in the sea are also moved closer. Traveling into the sea does not feel like you're moving away from the continent at all. Some missions are now plagued with unskippable cutscenes, making them unbearable for a second playthrough. A good example is wear flowers in your hair. I dread playing this mission nowadays since I gotta listen to all the dialogue for the 1000th time. Weapon order is now changed. Weapons don't go from the weakest to the strongest like melee, pistol, uzi, shotgun, ak and so on. But now you see a random AK, a random rocket launcher, molotovs and so on right in between the lighter weapons. The addition of the weapon wheel is no excuse, not everybody wants to use that. 
Garages are riddled with all kinds of garbage now. While this looks great, it's not empty anymore, it's not practical. Garages which once upon a time fit multiple vehicles are now limited to one. You can now store a lot less custom and unique vehicles. Also some bigger longer vehicles can no longer fit because walls are covered in trash, making your hood stick out. The bus driver's admission in GTA Vice City shows a text only for a few frames. You have no idea how much you get per customer unless you actively monitor your hood, sometimes the sound plays, but there's no text whatsoever. Also sometimes it doesn't even show at all, but you get the money. Here's the proper chainsaw sound. And here's the quote-unquote definitive sound. Broken beyond belief, repeating itself just like the garages do. Draw distance is now massive. This makes the map look tiny, especially the San Andreas one. Mount Chiliad is visible from Los Santos, for instance. While they did add an option to add some additional fog, you gotta be in a certain position to see it and it's very poorly implemented. When reversing in vehicles, obviously white lights should appear on the back. Well, the definitives disagree since now reverse lights are red, just like the brake lights. The mission which unlocks Totten Island in GTA 3 will sometimes fail if you don't skip the cutscene. At random times watching the whole cutscene will fail it. Skipping it always helps you progress. It's kinda weird how the devs want you to experience less of their garbage, isn't it? In GTA 3 you explode a massive ship, you clearly see it sinking, right? Well, right after, the ship is there in its entirety. Oh sorry, did I say entirety? The texture is there, but the ship itself is not. Driving into it is possible because there's no collision whatsoever. You can now call it a ghost ship. Here is how a normal race in any game ever goes. There's a countdown followed by a go. In the definitives there's a countdown, however the go text appears a second after. There's just a small gap which is unnecessary. Helicopters take off much quicker now, adding to the decrease of difficulty I pointed out earlier. In tight situations when you're escaping the police, for instance, escaping in a heli is much easier. Punching doors on cars will make them teleport to the opposite side of the vehicle. Very strange behavior, they should fall in front of Tommy, but they don't. The number of achievements is different for different stores. If you buy it on Steam for instance, you get less achievements than you would from the Rockstar store. And to open up the game you actually need to load both stores. Once you do and get an achievement, the Rockstar achievements will pop up, but they'll not register on Steam because they do not exist. The minimap shows an inaccurate position of your aircraft since it's tilted. Ok, so I'm currently flying and you can see that right now I'm on top of the mod garage, right? Well, that's wrong. I'm nowhere near it as you'll see. This causes many problems as you can guess. Performance is all over the place. Let's be honest here, the game does look good, especially at night time, however good should not make the game perform so terribly. Constant stutters, freezes, frame drops, even in areas which have nothing going on. Certain parts of the map in San Andreas are not aligned. Some are so messed up that you can see holes into the underworld and you can even sink into some of them. Some were fixed with patches, but many in the countryside still exist. The heli rotor blades lost their blur. They look very fake now and not realistic at all, especially in low frame rates. There's no more garbage on the floor. I guess we don't need it because this is the definitive editions and they're garbage, but anyway, in GTA 3 and Vice City for instance, you could see newspapers with Elvis. This is gone from the definitives. Dynamic shadows in GTA San Andreas no longer move in a fluid way. They jump every few seconds. This reminds me of how Minecraft used to be. At least Minecraft goes forward with technology, not backwards like the definitive editions. You can no longer adjust forklifts. There's only two positions, all the way up or all the way down. In the original you can adjust them however you like. Oversimplifying it in the definitive was a bad move. And they did it because they expect babies to play this game. 
cars explode too frequently, I assume because of the higher frame rate. Now you have less time to move away from a vehicle before it explodes, resulting in many more unnecessary dips. Traffic in GTA 3 and Vice City is increased. This is very important in the entirety of Vice City because we have many corners and tight streets. Driving to the cities is more infuriating now. The physics are completely busted. A lot of this comes from how the game's mechanics are tied to 60 FPS, but it's also a problem with the engine. I highlighted the fences already, but lampposts act weird. When breaking certain objects, they sink in the ground instead of falling on the top. Hay bales are insane too, and so, so, so much more. Some missions have desynced audio and the cutscenes are misaligned. The biggest offender I found is the Green Saber mission where the important facial expressions and reveals are not shown. Lip syncing is also a problem here. The roads on the Starfish Island map are now busted. They're misaligned and don't connect properly. It looks like two different devs worked on them. Some animations are broken, giving the NPCs and the player weird proportions like CJ riding a bike. You'll see many hunched back people and others with very extended arms. When looking at the distance in any of the games using a sniper, the textures far away are muddy, blurry and simply incorrect. This is visible even without a sniper, but it's much more blatant with it. In Vice City, you'll find this ship, which has a plank going from the ground to the ship. Or wait, does it have a plank? Well, yes and no, since the texture is there, but the collision is not, making you fall through it if you try using it. Flight controls with a keyboard on Vice City and San Andreas are completely bonkers now, especially the helicopters. The Hydra, for instance, has seen the most damage when it constantly targets things and retracts its wheels when getting close to the ground. Oh yeah, and sometimes you can't even control your camera, while the same game from 20 years ago allows you to do that. Hydraulics are weird. Instead of the games allowing you to lift up each tire individually, you can now activate the hydraulics and press a direction to lift up your car. This way you cannot drive and jump around. You always need to be stopped or else you would flip. The parallax interiors, which are interiors which you see from the outside, are repeated and also make no sense, like for instance the 24-7 shop will show an office interior from the outside, which obviously is not the case. The oil refinery machines don't move, helping the game lose one of its charms. The world will look a lot more dead and static without it. The sandstorm weather is broken, buildings will change textures and you cannot even see much of a dust cloud anymore. It's like the buildings are just big dust magnets. Leaves are present everywhere in the trilogy on the ground, however sometimes they'll float in the sky, in completely static and weird positions. The new buildings you see in GTA 3 from a distance on the mountains have smudgy textures from afar and when you go near them, you'll see how the houses are sunken into the mountain and others will be just half missing. NPCs will sometimes be solid, breaking your cars. This will also occasionally completely stop your vehicle like you just hit a tree or a massive rock. Sure, it doesn't happen very often and I cannot show it off here because I need a huge sample size, but it does happen and it's a problem. In device reanimation, the armor option is now a pickup instead. It even has a glow and spins around. It should be a display, not a pickup. In the original Vice City, you can hold an attack button and release it whenever you want to do some damage, giving you more precision when you want to land a blow. In the definitives, you can no longer hold it. Every click lands a punch. The waves in San Andreas in dangerous weather are inconsistent. CJ is stationary and does not move up and down. This way he sometimes floats in the air or is completely submerged but does not drown. Now this one I cannot really showcase but the audio is much lower quality in the definitive. It's most noticeable when firing a weapon but dialogue and other sounds are also affected. In the little probe restaurant, the fan above the pool table will block the view if you change the camera angle. This fan is not supposed to be here and for some reason it was moved above the table in the definitive. Certain weapons like the Kruger from GTA Vice City and the M16 from GTA 3 work in a different way. If you want to be precise with them, you gotta aim first since there's no crosshair. Aiming however makes your gun very inaccurate. If you don't aim first, 
you gotta start shooting and then you'll see where your shots will land, meaning that with the first few shots you most likely miss. Flight controls on the jetpack are busted as well, both aiming and going down use the same button which is right mouse, while shooting and going up is the left mouse. This creates a massive problem for missions like Green Goo, where now you gotta land and shoot instead of just flying around and shooting the enemies on the jetpack. The cannon on the minigun is now broken on the pickup, it's just missing, I have no idea what happened here. Using the gym is now a snooze fest, all you gotta do is press a single button, that's it. The same with lowrider bouncing and dancing, ultra simplified for the babies who play this game. CJ will puke out of his nose, he's a mutant. The airport hangar in the Las Venturas airport is now broken, it's supposed to open when you get close to it. Well, it does, but the door is not animated, you can just go through it. Touching some fences in GTA 3 makes them glitch out, they make random noise and sparks come out of them, Claude does not even shoot them and they make a lot of noise. The airstrip indicator which is the small yellow balls you see on your radar is busted, they'll go across your entire map and will not be confined to the airport itself. The logo on the Exumer gas station will no longer move and will be stationary. In a certain mission the game makes sure to point it out, well now it just points to a random boring sign. GTA 3 is known for its gory nature where you can shoot individual body parts of the body, crippling arms, legs and heads off of unsuspecting victims. Well, you can no longer do that because the children might see it and cry, apparently. Some fun cheat codes are removed, not my preferred way of playing but the less options we have the worse it is. When you're being chased in a car by the police and you press the horn button, the police sirens speed up. Basically you're controlling which type of siren plays once you press horn, and yeah this was not present before. In San Andreas you could always see how much health an NPC has, this helped a lot with gauging how many shots a certain enemy would take until we take them down, this is no longer the case here because the health bars were removed, at least the white outlines are now optional. Melee car damage is no longer a thing in San Andreas, no matter how many times you hit a car it will always be in pristine condition, it didn't look realistic before but at least there was a change in the model after you break it. In San Andreas there's a mechanic where if you get into a bike the enemy accuracy is reduced, allowing you to survive better and not get shredded unfairly in a couple seconds. While this mechanic was removed in the definitive an enemy accuracy is 100% at all times. In the bank heist mission in Vice City, Tommy points a gun a few different times, in the definitive he apparently forgot he had one since he does not point it at anybody. GJ3 and Vice City tanks are now useless as they were in the original San Andreas, back then you could lock your turret giving yourself a constant boost by shooting backwards or you could aim to the side as you drive forward, fending off enemies. Now the turret just follows the camera making tanks slower and less reliable. In Vice City we have a maze at the mansion, solving it is a fun challenge sometimes when you're bored and you have nothing else to do, and you can also get no help from anywhere. Well now you can just look at the minimap and you can solve it super super easily, the entire maze is laid out for you. Many objects in San Andreas don't have a breaking animation, the ones which do make them disappear completely once broken, it's so lazy in some places that essential doors needed to progress will be gone before the main character shoots them. Taking pictures in San Andreas used to save them onto your PC as long as you had the feature turned on, now this feature is nowhere to be seen in the game and you need external tools to screenshot your game. Weapons now fire quicker in San Andreas. Since the physics are tied to 60 FPS, the ammo of your weapons will be eaten up much faster as a result of the faster fire rate. The super sprint was removed from the game, you used to be able to tap the sprint button which gave you a boost and allowed you to sprint forever, now tapping it does nothing and CJ gets tired anyway, he's also slower as a result. 
In some missions of Vice City, once the cutscene finishes, there will be a black screen. That's when Tommy will have some words to say. Who does that guy think he is? Now I gotta dress like a chump as well as hang out with them? I like this shirt. The Definitive Edition removes these black screens, but it also cuts off half of Tommy's speech since he's put in the game immediately. Sometimes this cuts off important dialogue. Who does that guy think he is? Now I gotta dress like a chump as well as hang out with them? I like this shirt. One of the biggest mysteries in GTA 3 was the ghost town. It used to be a fun place to visit with your Doro when you have nothing to do. Well, say goodbye to the ghost town in the Definitive. There's no reason to travel anymore. Helicopters move vegetation when they get close to them. Stuff like trees and grass. This is no longer the case and the vegetation plus the world itself feels very dead as a result. Fire can be seen underwater if you throw a molotov. You can also hear the fire sound even though it shouldn't be there. This was not possible before. The top-down view in GTA 3 is now gone. This was actually a useful feature, allowing you to see enemies behind walls, but it's not here anymore. In each game you can set up only one button for each action while previously you could assign three separate buttons for the same thing. This allowed the use of some glitches and even just making it more convenient when you want to switch up your gameplay a bit. Many collisions around the map are now broken like this helicopter for instance. The hitbox is misaligned and on one side there's an invisible wall, on the other side you can just walk into the heli. Using the car's fly cheat in San Andreas is now useless. This turned from one of the best to the worst cheat since now we cannot control a car in mid-air. Mission related phone calls can no longer be skipped. Now you gotta wait for the phone call to finish so you can get into a car, punch someone and whatever else. There is a workaround but why is that needed when this was a no issue before? CJ will always close the door when exiting a vehicle. Previously you could set up your car for a quick getaway by leaving the door open. Now when entering the vehicle the few seconds it takes to close the door could cost you your life. And on number 101 I will include the fact that these versions exist at all. The Definitive Edition should have never been made in my opinion. Or if they had to be made, then a few more years should have been spent perfecting them so they are truly Definitive Editions. They could have released a game a year. GTA 3 for instance is pretty much fine and feels the best of the trilogy. Still garbage but it's playable at least. San Andreas is abysmal so if it got two more years I feel like the reception would have been much better. Rockstar really screwed the pooch here and I hope this does not repeat in the future. If you guys like these garbage versions then I recommend watching this video showcasing 10 positive things about the trilogy. And yes, I struggled finding 10 good things for weeks, but it took me just 3 hours to find a hundred bad things about them. Either way, I hope you enjoyed, subscribe, like, join my Patreon like all these awesome people did, and they are Olavi Likanin, Case Knights, Munish Pradeep, Sepp Levy, Epic Elev, The Sleep Gate Studios, Shinte, Clint McCurdy, Extreme Stuff, Jacob Medley, Max Robinson, Unknown Stranger, Versetti Nguyen, Jim Francesco's Bad Boy Hero, Xessi and everybody else.